In today's episode, we'll be replacing the print surface on a Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. I'm Brian, and you're watching BV3D. So today, we're going to be replacing the print surface on my Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer, and I'll be replacing it with a sheet of build tack. The build tack print surface is very similar to the build surface that was installed on the printer from the factory. This process should work for pretty much any 3D printer, but uh, obviously the video will be specific to the printer that I have in front of me. I've had this Monoprice Maker Select Plus uh, since July of 2017, and uh, it's kind of my tinker toy. It's the one that I've been using to learn about 3D printing, and uh, so all of the things that I've learned I'll be sharing with you guys, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to preheat the bed on the printer to about 50 degrees C. And that's going to have the effect of loosening the adhesive a little bit and making it easier to get the existing print surface off. My current existing print surface is also build tack, but I used the same procedure when I was removing the factory installed build surface. So go ahead and preheat the bed on the printer. You can either use the control panel on the front of the printer, or if you've got uh, Octoprint or some other printer control software, you can use that to do the preheating. Once the bed is up to temp, get your scraper, and let's get to business. Now you may notice that I've got uh, all kinds of add-ons and doodads on this printer. It is, it is not stock in appearance. I added some spotlights that I designed and printed. I've got a cluster of LEDs in each one. I've added a, uh, an arm for the camera, goes to the Raspberry Pi, lots of stuff. And I will cover those in future videos. Looks like our bed is up to temp. Let's have a seat here. Let's get the edge of the scraper right up under there. And because we've heated the bed, that has uh, softened the adhesive a little bit. And you can kind of use this back and forth motion to get that scraper blade up under there a little bit. And then you can leverage the stickiness of the adhesive and let it stick to the blade of the scraper. And I'm just applying a steady, even pressure to this build tack. And like I said, this, uh, this process will also work on the, uh, the print surface that came on the printer initially. Just heat it up a little bit and just kind of use this slow, even pressure to get your, uh, your old print surface off. And basically, you just replace this surface whenever you're starting to have problems getting the uh, the first layer to adhere. You can try and resurface these uh, these print surfaces a little bit. You know, clean between prints with uh, the isopropyl alcohol. Do not use acetone on a build tack sheet. Ask me how I know. I thought acetone would be a good idea, and it turned out not to be, because it has this tendency to melt the, uh, the build tack surface. So you don't want to use acetone on build tack. There we go. Starting to get more of this off. I think at this point... We can just kind of lift. Now I'll hold this fly carriage in place a little bit. It does take a bit of strength to do. Now since we know that this is not going back on the printer, I'm going to fold this under itself a little bit just to kind of keep it out of the way and to allow me to get under more parts of this stuff. I apologize if you hear barking. My neighbor has got some cute little white dogs, but boy, do they bark a lot. They are extra barky today. Bonk. We'll keep going. 
the warmer you get the build plate, I think the easier this process is. But I'm going with 50C. 50C is nice and hot. And it's enough to get this stuff loosened. And the, the idea here is you want to pull this off and not leave any residue. It's kind of like removing a price tag from something that you bought and you got home from the store. That's really all this process is. Because these build tax sheets are just big stickers. Almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. Awesome. With that done, we can crinkle this up and throw it in the trash. Let's zoom back out here. I need to get into this three pack of build tack. Let's cut that open. I personally like the build tack. I've tried printing on glass with this printer. And, uh, you know, I could use a glue stick to kind of get that first layer to stick. But uh, I have more problems than anything trying to use glass. But you, work, you use what works for you. So I've got my new square of build tack. For this printer, the printer's got like a 220 by 220 millimeter uh, heated bed. And the built-in print surface, or the, the print surface that comes with it, uh, extends all the way to the edges, but it has a 45 degree cut on each of the corners to accommodate the, uh, the bed leveling screws. So I'm just going to take my build tack here, and what we want to do is we want to get the, uh, the backing peeled off, and then we want to get, uh, get it lined up and start laying it down real careful. We're not just going to flop it down, we're going to sort of settle it into place. Man, I hate peeling stickers. Ah, come on. Cooperate with me. I paid for you, I own you, you're mine. Come on. If I can just get that little bit of plastic. There we go. I'll get this peeled off. Probably the hardest part of this process is just getting the back off of this. There we go. There's our build tack. This is very sticky on the back. I don't I, I get one take at this and that's it. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of lining this up right about where it needs to go getting those back corners lined up right by the screws. Yeah. Hoping you can see this. I'm kind of keeping that at an angle. Right like that. And then I'm just going to slowly lower that down while pressing. I'm sliding my thumb horizontally across the back of this build tack. And what I'm doing is I'm just adhering it a little bit at a time, kind of row by row, until I get down to the end here. I'm going to use this to support it, because what I don't want is I don't want to uh, trap an air bubble in here. We want that perfectly smooth. If you mess that up, you might be able to get like a, a needle or a straight pin or something, and... Uh, press under the, or poke a hole in that bubble and then press it out. But I prefer to get that done like that. That is smooth. That is a smooth print surface. No bubbles. No bubbles is what we want. We have replaced our build tack print surface. The old one is in the trash. The new one's on the heated bed, and I think we're good. 
That about wraps it up for the video today. As I mentioned earlier, there is a link in the description to the three pack of build pack build sheets that are on Amazon. That's not an affiliate link. I get nothing from Amazon for doing that. I get nothing from build pack for doing that. It is a product that I like and therefore I recommend it to you. I'm going to be doing some other videos in the future, some how-to style videos. For example, setting up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi to act as a print server for your 3D printer. That will give you time-lapse uh, abilities. It'll give you the ability to drag and drop files and print, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, I'll be doing some 3D design videos using Tinkercad, using 3D printing to solve problems, to replace broken parts for things around the house. All kinds of cool stuff. So I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, I encourage you to uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. But please leave a comment and let me know why you didn't like it. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you later.